Well, hello and welcome to another episode of More Perfect Marketing. My name is David Baer, and today I have the great, great pleasure of welcoming an Aussie who is no longer actually in Australia, uh, has been a resident here in the U.S. for the past three years and hopefully many more, Idris Shien. Welcome. Yes. Welcome to More Perfect Marketing. Uh, so, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm looking at you and your background there. We, we just chatted before I hit record. You're, you're in um, Upper Manhattan in Harlem, an area that I love. Uh, I spent many, many years uh, in that area. What brought you halfway around the globe to New York City? <laughs> wow, gosh, I feel like I have to start all. The, okay, I, I will, I'll answer your question yes. very, very simply. And then we can almost go backwards to how do, how do we get that to that point? So the moment when I made the decision to move to New York City was actually like not, it, it doesn't, it won't, it's not going to sound like a good story. Okay. Cause what happened was that we, we were stolen from and like a lot of money in one of my businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it was actually from someone that we trusted. It was one of our store managers in of one of our stores. And it took something like that, something uh, like a betrayal like that to happen for us to almost step back and be like, is this where we want to be? Is this what we want to be doing right now? And potentially for, you know, have a long into the future. And I have always wanted to live and work overseas. And I've always loved New York. I've been here many times before that. And so I was like, you know what? I just spoke to my husband, Ash, and I was like, let's just do this. I don't know how we're going to like, we'll figure it out, but let's just Let's do it. Let's move. Um, and so we did. So that was kind of, that's like my short answer. <laughs> that's, as, that's as short as the answer that can get because there's so much else that happened around that and before that and after that and yeah, everything that I'm sure we can dig into. We, we, we sure will. And there's a couple of things that you, you brought up there that I want to touch on as well. By the way, uh, that's what brought me across the country as well is I, I was born and raised in New York and I figured if I never escaped New York to just experiment what it might be like to live somewhere else for just a little while, I'll never do it, right? So I did it and I fell in love with this new place and have been here for like 14 years at this point. So <laughs> you, you yeah. never know what's gonna happen. All right, exactly. so we're, we're ultimately gonna be talking about a platform that you've developed called CapShow, um, which we'll dive into in a little bit more detail, but it's a tool that helps um, businesses, business owners get more um, efficient and effective at messaging both um, on, on social platforms as well as through email. Um, and, and so let's touch very briefly on that. But then I want to sort of roll back to the beginning because there's a lot that led up to your development of this. Yes. So much, <laughs> so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what, I mean, so I'm super excited about CapShow, obviously. Really where it stemmed from was, oh, and we'll get to this, but really knowing now to be effective online, you need to be telling your stories. Um, that's what it all comes down to. And that's been for many, many years being in business and stuff when I'm just trying to figure out how do I get cut through? How do I get my messaging right? How do I use this social media thing that, keeps you know when everything keeps like everything keeps changing on it um how do I keep reaching my audience all of that um and what it always came down to time and time again in all of the different iterations of all my different businesses was telling stories um that's what it always came down to but I, it's not an easy thing to do you know like it's very easy to say yeah start telling the stories but it's definitely from an introvert not an easy thing to do um and so I you know because I went through those struggles and I saw my clients going through those struggles I wanted to create something where it would make it a lot more easier a lot as you said efficient streamlined to put your stories into this platform and it will actually then create a bank of captions, short form captions and email off the back of that. So that's essentially what the, 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 the platform does. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so first of all, it's the first time I've seen the combination of social content and email created from the same tool. So that's kind of cool. And um, we'll get back to that in a little bit, but I, you've solved a problem, hopefully for many people, who are struggling with the, okay, I got things that I could say. Um, I'm not really sure how to turn my story into something that's useful. 
and you're finding a, a path from the knowledge that they have about themselves, their situation, their story, to creating something on the other end that then they can apply to the, the marketing or promotion of their business. Exactly, exactly. That's totally our aim. Now, the platform itself, we did just launch MVP end of last year. So it's like not, it, right now it's quite manual. It's like you have to actually write your story into it. Um, but we have like, cause you know, I love, for example, the podcasting medium um, because it's all about stories, all right? Like we talk, about, we're talking and we're sharing stories. And so what I would eventually love to do is for it to actually, you know, ingest this cornerstone content like a podcast, like a YouTube video, things like that. And it will actually completely bridge that gap between this, you know, as I said, cornerstone content that we create and we find maybe a little bit more natural to tell stories and share experiences and provide value to being able to actually amplify that across any platform, um, whether it be Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or um, Twitter, uh, you know, because fun ultimately it comes back to the same thing, which is your stories, but just in used in a platform specific way, which I think a lot of times gets lost in the repurposing of content mm -hmm. um and so that's essentially that's the that's definitely to your point the bridge that i want to get uh, the, the the um the gap that i want to to you know close for entrepreneurs because mm -hmm. it's tough it's hard it's a hard thing to do um, i'm not going to downplay that so yeah that's where we're heading so so many businesses are focused on marketing based on what they see or what somebody who probably doesn't know very much about marketing, tells them, oh, you should try this, right? I, I'm constantly, you know, referring to the nephew who says you need to be on TikTok for the, <laughs> you know, the, the tax attorney yes. or, or something where there's no, you know, relevance to what that end goal is for that particular platform. And ultimately, that's, that's what your tool is intending to, you know, fill that, that the gap, as you said, but to what end for most for most businesses it's really to either get new connections to new customers or to maintain a relationship with existing customers so can you talk a little bit about sort of how how that part works yes so i'm a big big believer in and i was actually talking about this this morning um on a on another on a live that i was doing where I have a, 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 as part of the strategy, um, I, we do something called content hacking. Um, and that's because we, you know, it's very, very hard to get cut through unless you're huge, you know, like you've got a massive audience yourself without having learned from other people. I think that's just life. That's just anything mm -hmm. in life, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I use content hacking as a way for to model what's already working out there. Now, the thing that people uh, miss, you know, when we talk, like when we hear from the TikTok gurus and stuff where it's like, yeah, you have to be on this platform because, uh, you know, you can go viral and all this stuff. And I'm like, I look at that and I'm like, I get it. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a nice hit to have this like, you know, tens of thousands or whatever views, but are they right from the right people? Right. Are they actually the people that you want to be attracting? And that's why I always go back to, you know, the great thing about content hacking. And, and you know, that's why it's part of my strategy is because you're actually hacking or you're modeling things that are resonating with your ideal customer or your ideal client, your dreamiest buyers, right? Like, because there's no point in you going viral for the sake of it. And it's like, you have people who are just absolutely not in your ideal audience helping you go viral. Like that's not the point, but if you can get great engagement um, and great like visibility to the people that you care about, that's what counts. So that's what we want to be using social media platforms for is to get in front of the right people, first and foremost. And then second of all is, as, as you said, like you, you, you built a community, right? Like this is the thing, like we put so much time and effort into this thing called content creation. Sometimes, you know, we feel like we're just kind of, you know, speaking into a complete void, a black hole. Uh, but a lot of times people are watching. Like they may not, they may not engage and which is, you know, not great because we want them to be, but, you know, ultimately people are watching you. And I always use this, you know, especially Instagram because, you know, TikTok is a new thing, but I always come back to Instagram because even when you look at, you know, you Google any brand or any person, like nine times out of 10, Instagram is in the top three, is ranked top three in that search. Hmm. And so if you don't start to use these platforms 
to build your credibility, to build your authority, to actually engage with your community that you want to be building, then you're missing out on a big, big opportunity there. Um, so I'm always like, I always walk, because I have a love, by the way, I have a love-hate relationship with social media. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm not one of those people who are like, yeah, I love social media. Like I, half the time, I really, really hate it because mm-hmm. of all of those things, because it's like, it's a time suck and it's an energy suck. And it's, you know, and you a lot of times you're like, why am I doing this when I don't even know what I'm getting from it? But that's, you know, it's kind of like the whole SEO thing, right? Like you do it because people are there. They're looking at you. They're searching you. They're following you. Um, You know, a lot of times, like, you know, I do talk about engagement as one of the biggest metrics that you want to be, you definitely want to be optimizing on social media. But sometimes you can't get that engagement because your audience, depending on who your audience is, maybe they're just not the types of people who do. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're just not those types of people. So, you know, it is a bit of a balance of like, how do you um, put effort into where, you know, where you can see tangible results and yeah. where do you put, you know, but not too much where it's like such a suck on, your, on the rest of your life, really. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, you, you, you made a really good point earlier and, and being somebody who is an expert in viral marketing right? You made the point that virality is not the end goal. It's actually, you know, to either engage and foster relationship with existing, you know, uh, customers, clients, patients, whatever, or to actually make sales in your business. Um, And, and so I I want to push back on one thing that I heard you say, Mm. because you said, you know, one of the key metrics or most important metrics is engagement, which may or may not always, you know, be possible depending on who your audience is, the types of people they are, you know, it's made up of. But if our goal in business is to be making sales or signing up clients or retaining clients, shouldn't the the principal metric actually be, you know, what happens after that social media post goes up or that engagement happens? did it actually convert into something meaningful for the business? Yes, I, I love that question. Thank you. Um, okay, so engagement is 100% one of the, but it is one um, of the key metrics. So, okay, so the way that I think about it is, you know, there's almost like four key, four metrics that I look at. One, I say more for completeness sake, but I almost just, just like put it to the side and that's reach um, because, you know, reach is something that we can't control. Like I'm a big believer. I've, I've done, like I've daily, I look at the numbers and I go through it with my team. We can do all the hashtag research and all the things in the world, but ultimately we don't have control over that. The platform does. And so, you know what, Let, I'm not even going to split hairs over that because we, we can't, we can't control it. Right. So I almost like, it's, yeah, it's important for complete sake, but let's put that to the side. So then where like engagement is almost like the second in the process. And I'm talking from a process perspective. Um, and then we have number of qualified followers and then number of qualified leads. So those are the other three metrics that I think are really, really important to look at. Now, why is that? Okay, so you mentioned, is engagement actually the most important thing? Engagement is really important because this is actually an indicator of the quality of your content. And mm-hmm. the reason why the quality of your content is really important is because that's actually what drives the quality of and number of quality, qualified followers. And it's a number of qualified followers that drives a number of qualified leads that you get. So it's kind of, you know, we always talk about funnels in the, in the online space. It's kind of your funnel. If you don't have quality content or at least, a, you know, and that's what we use engagement as the sort of lag indicator for that, then how, like, it's going to be really, really hard unless you're doing kind of more the span, like a lot of outreach to actually then get the follow the qualified followers who again are magnetized by your content to then have them convert into a qualified lead, which obviously you need to get a sale. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I think about it. And and I think that there's something based on you know your description there that is that that you can leverage on social media because it's a uh, an environment where multiple people are seeing, you know, or people are seeing what other people are doing, right? And so if you can take advantage of the way that people um, use social media, interpret social media, 
uh, it's going to ultimately be more effective in that end goal of 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 getting the sale or, or keep it or keeping the client around. Totally. Totally 100% agree with that. All right. Let, let's 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 turn back the clock a little bit because I want to ask you about this this um, website that I have been looking at for the last half hour of decadent chocolate uh, yeah. items um, from the from this cool place that I I want to get to someday in yes. uh, in New South Wales and Canterbury. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the chalk pot? Yes, uh, it's like the my first baby ever. <laughs> um, it, that was the first business that we started, my husband and I. So this was, gosh, almost almost a decade ago. It'd be maybe nine ish years ago, and we were naive. We were green. I was like, okay, so I was in corporate. I was working at in a, in an investment bank in Sydney. And my husband at the time was studying medicine and he, we were both like at this crossroads of, for me, I knew that corporate wasn't going to be the forever path. Um, I had, I was fortunate enough to be, you know, on projects and stuff where I had visibility all the way to the CEO. But because of that, I could also see almost like the type of person you had to become to climb the corporate ladder. And I, that just wasn't, you know, I very early on, I was like, I just can't do that. Yeah. Um, so I was at a bit of crossroads myself. My um, my husband, who had, was studying medicine, was miserable. He was not enjoying it. He hated, you know, having to go into the hospital. And, you know, he's just, it was just was not um, his thing. So we were like, oh, gosh, where to next? Like, what are we going to do? Um, at the time, we'd sort of, um, uh, we 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 weren't married yet, so he, we were just um, you know partners then. But we just moved out, and uh, you know we had to start adulting for the first time in our lives, which meant you know cooking for ourselves and and all those things. And uh, funnily enough, like Ash really enjoyed, like he fell in love with cooking and specifically actually baking. Um, and I think the re one of the big reasons why is because I love my desserts, and so you know he'd be trying to perfect all of these um, desserts that I love uh, at home. And so one day I think we were just like you really enjoy doing this and I know that corporate's not for me and I know that I want to be in business why don't we just give it a shot like why not and I mean I say that now knowing at the time like if I <laughs> if I was speaking to myself at that time now I'll be like don't do it like okay I, I don't I don't regret anything because I have learned so much anyway so we went into full, like being completely naive, going into this brick and mortar business, which is one of the hardest business that you can start with, because we were in debt from before we even opened with all the fit out um, costs. We had rent to pay from day one. We had wages to pay from day one. We had supplies to pay from day one. Like we did not know what we we're in for. And so we struggled like for a, for months and months and months. Like we, I was like, to, I, I was like, I don't know how we're going to make this work. But we had to find a way because we were on the hook for a lease agreement. We were on the hook for debt. Like we were on the hook for all these things, which in hindsight now I'm like, I'm so thankful for that because it would have been so easy to just have given it all up um, and not push through because that, you know, because we couldn't, like we couldn't give up, <laughs> you know. Um, and so we did, we pushed through and we made it. We actually opened, we opened five stores in Sydney. Um, we did have to close a couple um, who that weren't performing. And then also in the meantime, we, we also opened burger restaurants. We have two burger restaurants as well mm -hmm. in Sydney, still operating. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's been a wild ride. Um, and it was actually one of our stores um, in the city that was when we were, that was the one that we were stolen. Um, money was stolen mm -hmm. from us, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So yeah, that was. <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, there, there's a couple of things that are incredibly relevant to to um, you know today when we have that we're recording this in early 2022. Okay. Mm -hmm. The world is seeing. I mean, here in the U.S., we call it the, what what we call the Great Resignation. But there are many places around the world where this is happening, where where people are realizing that. You know the the corporate life or the un, uh, or the employment life is not for them, and they and they are becoming more and more aware of entrepreneurship opportunity, whatever that may look like. You you yeah. went a particularly you know rough path, which is you know real world um, you know storefront type businesses where I think most people are seeing 
you know, it's easy to open up an online virtual business these days um, at a much lower cost than it probably was 10 years ago. Um, yeah. But it, I'm sure people are um, experiencing this, their version of your story these days, right? The, the second thing is, uh, I recently read a book that if you haven't read, uh, if our listeners haven't read, I would highly recommend. It's called Almost Alchemy. Um, by, by one of the guys who I talk about a lot on this show, a guy named Dan Kennedy. And he talks a great deal about how, as businesses, we're misguided around the things that concern us about money, right? That some other business is undercutting our pricing and we need to have a race to the bottom on price so that we can compete. Or um, that our customers are, you know, for some one way or another, um, you know, cheating us or, but we don't look internally in our own businesses for where we are losing money and don't invest properly in protecting ourselves in places that we ought to, because so many businesses, right, have, I I don't know how many corporate uh, experiences are, you know, have their ears tuned into this conversation right now, but how many times have you been in an employment situation where uh, you just needed to make a couple of photocopies for yourself or you ran out of paper at home and uh, they have a pile of reams of paper that you can take from the office and that sort of thing loses more money for businesses than anything else. Now, you, you, you were dealing with a much bigger problem than that, but businesses across the globe aren't looking inward. And I imagine that probably was at least a piece of, of your story. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny because I talk about systemization, like the reason why that we were able, we're able to be on the other side of the world and have our businesses still run in Sydney is because we systemized the heck out of everything, the heck out of everything. Now, the one thing that we didn't systemize or we could not have foreseen is employee theft like because I think the thing is when you don't and and I think this comes back to like the looking inward sometimes it's like also what are your blind spots in terms of the reason why we didn't is because we're not those people right like you know I definitely wouldn't have gone into work somewhere and been like okay how I'm going to figure out how I'm going to steal from this person Mm -hmm. or like you know and that's the same with Ash and so sometimes it's like how do you because we systemize the heck out of everything but we also now know I mean at the time we didn't we now know that we have all these blind spots that we just did not systemize for Um, and so I think that's the thing it's like how how do you for us especially in in our story it was like wow, how do we almost step back and try to or at least get some, maybe get someone to objectively look at it and be like, these are your blind spots that mm-hmm. you need to be shutting down right now um, because we didn't do that bit. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a difficult one because, you know, can you, like, predict what's going to happen? Like, it's just you can't, right? <laughs> like, that's the thing. Um, but at the same time, I'm also, you know, in a way, in a weird way, thankful that that happened Mm -hmm. because it kind of led us down a different path which you know is exactly where I think I we needed to be um so you know there's always something always something good that comes out of crappy situations (laughs) this 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 is a scary thought for somebody who hasn't been an entrepreneur but there's this idea of failing fast and failing often and how that helps you move forward um, more effectively. And uh, I mean, clearly you've had at least a few failures that have probably propelled you forward in in directions that you weren't expecting. So you you never know what you don't know and and you have to go through some, you know, bumpy road to to find out and, and learn great lessons and then be able to, getting back to stories, use those as, you know, teaching moments. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't agree anymore. And talk about failures, wow, I have had probably more failures than, than is probably normal to the point where I'm like, is it me? <laughs> so, um, yeah, but here, I mean, th- this, this is an important thing that you just said because um, 
you know, very often my, my partner will go to a networking event or used to back when networking events were a common thing. And he would talk about the, the challenges or frustrations of a business owner saying, I, I know exactly what your problem is, uh, you know, sort of diagnosing their, their marketing uh, uh, business growth challenges. And, you know, the, their answer to whatever he describes is, oh my gosh, how do you know my business so well? And his answer is, look, you're not special. Everybody has these problems. And the answer is usually something like, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. So it's great to get these things out in the open because I think a lot of business owners, we all think we're in this this bubble, nobody else is suffering like we are. We're struggling. We're, we're you know, it's insurmountable, this path ahead of us. And yet we're all actually dealing with the same sets of problems and challenges and we're just too uh, uncomfortable or sheltered or protective of ourselves to, to share this stuff and, and learn that others are going through all of this. Yes, 100%. Um, and I think that's the thing, like I, I, I know this intellectually, but I fall into this trap all the time as well, which is I look at other people and I'm like, oh man, they're having so much success. Like how, when can I get there? Or how, do, you know, and I forget that, they had to go through a lot as well. And, and, you know, and that's why more and more, I do want to share these stories of like, my definitely I've had a lot of failures, my failures, but, and I want to hear them back as well. Like, you know, because I do, I look at all these other people who are either at my level or above and I'm like, like, is it, and that's why I'm like, is it me? <laughs> Am I the only one who's struggling through these things? Because yeah, what people talk about is just the successes, which I get it. Um, we want to talk about successes as well, but we need to balance that out with the failures for sure. Okay. I want to move along a little bit because you've, you've got these businesses in Australia. Um, mm -hmm. You started more businesses and, and we should, you know, sort of highlight a, a little bit more of what you uh, have done since then, because you actually work with entrepreneurs. You help entrepreneurs in their businesses. And, and we should fast forward to some of the, the work that you've been doing there. Yeah, for sure. So I, wow, where do I start? So yeah, came to New York. We actually, we work working on a new business. I have another co-founder now um, and we failed it. So we actually deliberately failed that business that we had come to New York to um, to explore. And we kind of fell into a whole lots, lot of different things. Um, we fell into agency work and that led us into coaching, um, which then has, le has led us into capture um, specifically because of the fact that time and time again, we were seeing this storytelling element, which is actually core to creating viral content. Um, we were seeing that people were just struggling with that. So that's how we got to this point. Um, and now, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> and this is a funny thing. This literally has happened, David, in the last like couple of weeks where I've, I, I, I swear, I feel like I'm having mini breakdowns like almost every second day <laughs> because we kind of, we, we launched Cap Show that, as I said, was end of last year. So again, intellectually, let's go through the logic in a way. It's like it's only really been like three, four months that we have actually started this brand new business. In my mind, I'm like, but I've been doing this for the last, you know, eight years. Like, I, I should have this figured out already. Like, I should be on the, the, the fast track to mm -hmm. making millions of dollars already, you know, um, which is just irrational. Anyway, so this is kind of like what my, 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 my brain is, is thinking. And at the same time, I'm forgetting all of the fundamentals. I'm forgetting, you know, and we spoke about strategy before, but one of the fundamentals that we hear time and time again is you've got to niche down. You've got to niche down, right? And I was like, because when we when we actually started coaching, we were working with e-commerce businesses. So we had our niche and specifically female, female e-commerce businesses. Um, and then we were like, oh, this cap show is going to help everyone. It can help all entrepreneurs, <laughs> And so we will, and so we just forgot some of the fundamentals. And it's only that's why I say it's only in the last couple of weeks that we were like, we we're reminded very like you know starkly that we have to go back to basics. There's a reason. There's always a reason why something's not working, and it's generally because of a fundamental, you know, component of going to market. And for us, it was like, we just were not niching down. We were not getting cut through with our messaging, which is funny because I teach that as well. <laughs> like I teach getting cut through with their messaging, but we were not, we were not getting cut through with our messaging. Um, and that was, you know, so we had to really look at everything. And now we do help entrepreneurs, but we help uh, business owners 
who podcast um, mm-hmm. specifically right now. Not forever, um, because we know that, you know, as we grow, that will we'll stretch out. But right now we want to help business owners with podcasts because we know that there is cornerstone content there around their stories that they can share in more ways and use that to get leads. So that's kind of where we've ended up. Um, I don't know, gosh, I, I'm, I do apologize. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know that there was a question. We're having a conversation more than anything okay. else. And this is fascinating. Um, you know, the, the whole concept of, you said niche or niche? Cause I, I, I thought, I thought that you would be saying niche, um, focusing your business, right. Uh, on, on a specific audience doesn't mean that you can't serve somebody else. And so, you know, if somebody is listening to our conversation and saying, oh, that sounds so cool, but I don't have a podcast, I guess it's not for me. Well, that's not the point. The point is that your efforts are focused on attracting and speaking to the needs of somebody who's podcasting, but that you can accommodate other people. You're just not marketing directly to them at this moment in time. Yes, exactly. Which, oh my gosh, David, like, thank you. Because again, I teach this stuff, right? Like, I'm like, (laughs) I literally basically said a variation of that on another live that I did. And yet I'm like, it is so hard to do. And this is why, you know, not to, you know, but it is so important to have objective, like mentors, coaches, who like whoever, you know, you. it's so important to have that in your life because so many times, I know I fall into this trap where I'm like, oh yeah, I know this stuff. I'm good. I like, I know it. I, you know, I can, you know, but OMG, like I have gone through this process of definitely in the last few months where I'm like, I, it feels like I've forgotten everything and I've needed to be reminded, like, you know, like, I don't know, like just to hit, get, get, get your hand on my head and just like throw me into the pile and to like, just like slam my face into it because like I forgot those fundamental terms, but what is it, exactly what you said? I forgot that, like, by speaking very specifically to someone with a very targeted message that will get cut through, it does not mean that I'm precluding everyone else. Because, and that's why stories are so important, actually. Because what stories bring is that we might think that I might think that I'm just like telling my specific story, for example, in the, with the chalkboard, with stacks on burger, with all these. But anyone else listening to this will be able to hear my story with their frame, with their perspective. And I forget that because that's just what, hum- that, I mean, humans do that. And so when I was like, when I'm like, why, how did I get to this point right now? I've got all these things where I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to have a very focused message. But that's not to say that other people don't hear that and bring their own frame. And to your point, it doesn't mean that they're precluded from being part of my audience and being part of my community. So yeah, that's kind of, that is literally what I've been going through in the last couple of weeks. So, well, <laughs> just so cl- you know. Clearly, you know your stuff uh, and you suffer from the same thing that I do and so many entrepreneurs do, which is that we're experts in helping other people and seeing other yeah, people's yes. challenges but it's what we call the cobbler's children syndrome, right? We we are so focused on being able to help others, but we don't usually do it for ourselves. And it's really hard to coach or consult yourself. Yeah. And and yes. so I, I you know I see this time and again in our business, and and I so I I feel for you <laughs> in this in this situation as well. Listen, we we are about out of time, and I want to make sure that this this. Um, fascinating new project that that you've started and you're publicly a few months into and personally yes. you know decades into probably <laughs> or at least it feels that way that that you, yeah. can, you can share a little bit about um uh, what cap show is all about um with folks where can people find out more yeah so um go to www.capshow.com or um that's kind of like the software specific, but if you want to find out more about like what I as my personal brand do and can help with, then um, www.dindrishen.com, um, D-E-I-R-D-R-E-T-S-H-I-E-N. It's like the most complicated name in the world, but <laughs> it's also one of a kind. So <laughs> yeah, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure together. we'll make sure to link to both of those so that people can click as opposed to have to type out your name. Yes. Uh, and um, and I really appreciate the the opportunity to have a first conversation with you. And I'd, I'd love to continue the conversation on another episode. So hopefully we can find time in our yeah. schedules to, to do that. Love that. Would love that, David, for sure. 
Well, Deidre Chen, thank you so very much for hanging out with me. Uh, I'm gonna suggest that people check out the work that you're doing both uh, with CapShow and uh, the, uh, the other work that you do helping uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. And in the meantime, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with us and having uh, the opportunity to uh, spend a little bit of time in your ears uh, during this episode of More Perfect Marketing. Look forward to seeing you back here again real soon. Take care.